Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, America's number one trusted resource for realtors who demand authentic, real-time coaching. Starring award-winning real estate coaches Tim and Julie Harris. Get ready for unfiltered, full-strength honesty about what is truly working to get you into action and make you money in this new real estate boom. Now to our hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. I think my favorite part of that introduction, Julie, is the part mm-hmm. where our producer says, make you money. <laughs> I know, right? very serious. Uh, Almost a I know, but, <laughs> I know, but you know what the fact is, is that is the bottom line. That's, that's the whole yeah. point of being in coaching. That's the whole point of this radio show mm-hmm. is, yeah, the, the motivation that some of you um, get from the radio show, I, we obviously love that. Uh, the education, that's great too, but motivation and education isn't, worth anything unless you can actually apply it and you're making money when you're in service to other people there's the little par- or the little connector for all of you guys you know mm-hmm. it's you never forget this if you don't have the lifestyle if you don't have the money if you don't have the financial freedom if you have just the opposite of all those things you feel like you're uh, you know living in a cage you have debt you don't have any money you don't have any freedom so you know look at the opposite of what i'm expressing here if you're finding yourself experiencing hardship the reason is and guys it really is this simple is because you have yet to either learn or apply what you've learned uh, to be a service to enough people. In other words, as a coaching client, for example, as a majority of you are, you're not yet fully um, expressing your willingness to be of service to enough people. You're not uh, actually taking enough listings, as a, for example, or selling enough buyers to homes. You're not being of service helping people solve their perceived problems, their perceived challenges. And by enough people, I mean, yeah, huge numbers. For you to accomplish your goals and to really allow your, your heart to be set free and think really, really big, you're going to have to be uh, along with that, accepting the fact that means you're going to have to learn to take listings, and a lot of them. In other words, you're going to have to, maybe for the first time in your lives or the first time in a long time, you're going to have to be willing to work harder for a longer period of time. Um, but guys, there's never been a better time to be in the real estate industry, and I mean that ever, ever than right now. You are in the right place at the right time. So just consider that, that if you're not experiencing the wind at your back right now, if you're not experiencing the best year of your entire working career, whether it's been in real estate or not, let us help you and request a free coaching call at freecoachingcallsforagents.com. You know, we have 11 coaches that they set aside time every day in their busy schedules to provide you guys with free coaching calls. And it's not just, it's, it's not what you expect if you've not had a free coaching call. It's actually an in-depth drill down, and you're going to walk away when you have a free coaching call with um, copies of our free books. I'm sorry, copies of our books that are, we're going to give them to you for free. These are books that are for sale on Amazon, <laughs> you know, and I appreciate those of you who have purchased them, but the fact is, is that um, if you request a free coaching call, we're going to give you Think and Grow Rich for Real Estate, and we're also going to give you the Real Estate Treasure Map. And we have four other books that we also have. Uh, But those are the two books that you get when you request a free coaching call. Those two will be digitally emailed to you, and there you go. And then you also get a great, very practical, I have to say, easy to understand, easy to follow business plan when you have your free coaching call with a coach. So, Julie, we're going to pick up where we left off a couple days ago. And the topic of today's radio show is? The topic of today's radio show is the continuation of five things that will make you rich in real estate. And again, if you missed the beginning of this, go back to realestatecoachingradio.com and get caught up because we're going to start about midway into this with presenting rules. So we're taking this idea of the five things. You don't have to be great at, you know, 50 things in real estate in spite of the endless emails that people send you convincing you otherwise. You really only have to be great at five core skills. So today we're going to be talking about not just that thought, but what to do with that thought, how to implement that. So we're going to talk about presenting rules. And if you'd like me to just jump into that, Tim, we can do that. Of course. Yes, absolutely. Perfect. So presenting rules. Number one, actually have buyer and listing presentations. Make sure they're powerful and proven. So the second part of that point is just as important as the first. Not just have buyer and listing presentations. Make sure they're powerful and proven. Make sure you're not using something that you know, you picked up someplace 12 years ago when you got into real estate. It's got to be powerful and proven for today's market. It's got to be polished. How do you know if you're using a great presentation? Well, sorry to be tough on all of you, but guess what? You know it works when you take the listing listing that you go on. 
Not that you take it 50% of the time or that you kind of use it sometimes on some presentations and you half wing it and half use it. The presentation is there for you to take the listing, period. You got, I always tell my, my uh, clients with kids, Tim, you, know, you wouldn't accept a 50% grade from your kids in anything. They wouldn't make it to the next grade in school. So why do some of you accept a 50% ratio on appointments gone on versus listings taken? That's not okay here. Go be coached by somebody else if you think that's okay. Right? Well, yeah, so, it is, but, it, but it's a nice it, – it is a very low bar to set your standards to because the mental mm -hmm. – scale that, right? So if you think it's okay just to take half the listing appointments you go on, that means you're probably also – holding yourself back in other aspects of your life. In other words, mm -hmm. it's, if you really wanted to go to Europe, uh, but you just end up basically going to um, the Eiffel Tower in uh, Las Vegas and Vegas. think that's the same <laughs> as going to the Eiffel, uh, Eiffel Tower in Paris, it's not. Yeah. But see, what happens is if you start compromising what you, your expectations you have for yourself, those same compromising thoughts become a lifestyle. And then you're going to basically be compromising in every turn of the road, and then you're going to have a compromised life, and you're going to wake up. And I know some of you are waking up right now realizing that this isn't the life that I wanted to have. These aren't the, you know, the goals, the dreams that I know I'm capable of. What do I have to do to take it to the next level? Well, start with the, very, the thought that Julie just shared with you. When you go on a listing appointment, no longer accept the fact, assuming the seller has to sell, right? No longer accept anything other than a signed listing contract. If you, you have to have uh, the mindset that you're going to take 100% of the listing appointments you go on 100% of the time. And if you don't take the listing for any reason, it's your fault. I don't care if the other agent overpriced it. I don't care if the other agent uh, cut the commission. It doesn't matter if the other agent was the um, sister or brother or whatever. It doesn't matter. Those are all objections that you should have vetted out prior to going on the appointment and you should have overcome. Any form of failure that you experience, you have to own it. Even if it's a stretch, you have to own it because then you can grow from it. And if you're so willing to blame something outside of yourself and not own a failure, what happens is you're not going to change, you're not going to grow, you're not going to evolve, and that's where you start saying 50% of the appointments I go on, I should be able to take, and you start thinking that's okay. You see, guys, it's all about your mindset. Remember what Jules and I say, it's, you know, I have yet to find anything to disprove this. Success in anything in life is 90% mindset and 10% everything else. 10% the practical skills, 10% the systems, 10% the, you know, the training, all of that. Okay, it's 90% mindset, and that's what a lot of what we do on this radio show, and frankly, what a lot of coaching is. It's working on your mindset because the skills themselves, guys, aren't that complicated. They really aren't, Jules. Yeah, it, it's the mindset, first of all, to accept that maybe you do need to upgrade your skills and to remove those excuses. So the point, first point was actually have buyer and listing presentations. If you don't have those, of course, you know where to come. We can help you with that. It's not just here's a presentation. We actually coach you what to say, how to say it, when to say it, and how to win. That's the difference between coaching and training. So point number two. Create and use a pre-listing presentation. Again, make sure it's powerful and proven. The pre-listing ensures that when you get there for the real listing presentation, it's going to go smoother and shorter and easier for both you and your prospect. So point number three, know your scripts, your objection handlers, and your closes. Again, we're talking about presenting rules here. That's not just with regards to listings, but also working with buyers and lead follow-up and closing and objection handling. So know your scripts. Winging it will only get you so far. It's not going to get you 100% there. And some of you guys are better at winging it than others. So if you're a great winger, you're going to be an excellent script user. So keep that in mind. Point number four on our presenting rules. Develop a high level of versatility. So you're not just working with people who are just like you, who fall in your lap or who get referred to you. Skill development is required to get you there. So Tim, this is kind of like a chicken or an egg type of thing. Don't you find that agents with the highest level of versatility, and what's versatility? The ability to work with a variety of people in a variety of situations successfully. But don't you find that the most versatile agents also make, it, make the most money? Absolutely, <laughs> I mean, I of do, course. Right? I mean, yeah, that's definitely true. I mean, you have to basically, if you know, the whole DISC, the whole personality profile, so many people have been exposed to that. You know, Julie, I actually think I got a funny response the other day. 
uh, from one of our longtime listeners, and what they were saying, they were talking about, oh, they were trying to basically just give me jib-jab, you know, just joking with mm-hmm. me, and they said, oh, let me guess, you guys are going to talk about DISC again. And, you know, I, mm-hmm. I, I thought it was funny because we do talk about it a lot because really it is important. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, then I challenged that person, and I get, we had a little coaching session. I said, so, you, you know, you basically heard DI, oh, yeah, my broker talks about it. I've read the books. I've taken the test. I've taken different mm-hmm. versions of the test. Da, 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 da. Okay, so explain it to me. What's your personality type? Oh, they always say we're the same thing. I'm a driver, right? Isn't that what every realtor right. thinks? I'm a Standard driver, response. right? Mm-hmm. And then I said, okay, well, describe to me the last, say, for example, five clients you've worked with. Um, and then uh, he described the last five clients that he'd worked with, and, and I said, so how are those clients different than you? In other words, the descriptive uh, words that you just used to describe those recent, you know, their a mix of sellers and buyers, how similar were they to you? Oh, they're great. We got along perfectly. They da 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 You know, in, es- in essence, what he had done without knowing it is even though intellectually maybe he understood the concepts of DISC, he wasn't applying it. Because he right. was making the mistake that so many people do. He was only attracting to him the types of folks that were like him. In other words, the whole point of understanding DISC isn't just intellectual you know, curiosity. It's so you can learn to be versatile. That is the punchline, versatility. You have to be able to, to cater. You have to be able to change yourself so that you can service not just your own personality type or maybe just one or two of the personality types. There's four distinct ones, right? But so you can work with all four personality types. And the best, you know, litmus test as far as whether or not you're actually applying DISC is do uh, look at the last few folks you've worked with and ask yourself, be honest, how similar they are to you. Chances are not only are you only working with clients that are similar to you, but chances are you're only uh, friends <laughs> with people mm-hmm. that are similar to you. Your only, you know, all you, your whole life is basically uh, a mirror of a lack of versatility. You're not actually appealing to, or willing to work with, or willing to learn the skills to work with. It would be a better way of saying it with folks that aren't very similar to you. It's a, again, guys. Remember, ninety percent mindset, ten percent the rest of it. Julie, what's the next point? Exactly. Okay, so the next point and our last point under presenting rules is to learn how to actually close, to cut down on A, losing potential clients because you don't close on them, and B, endless follow-up. And, and what I'm talking about with, regard, with regards to presenting here and closing, if you find yourself walking out of a listing presentation saying, thanks, I'll follow up, I'll get back with you, you didn't close. If you send a buyer off into the sunset after showing them something without closing on the next appointment while they're standing in front of you, you have a yep. closing issue. So learn how to close to cut down on losing clients as well as for your own sake to cut down on endless follow-up. I mean, how many hundreds of times do the coaches hear per week, well, I left them a message, I followed up, and I'm waiting to hear back. Right? So stop that by closing harder in the first place and then on buyers, you know, and even listings, if you don't take it right away, you're going to set a follow-up appointment. Don't let them out of your grasp. So learn how to close. Again, this is under the big topic of being great at the five core things in real estate. And actually, I think it's six if I count properly. Here and there. So negotiating rules are the next thing to be really, really great at. And some of you guys are already having a panic attack because you really get uncomfortable negotiating. But this is well, a core actually, Julie, skill. it kind of falls into two categories, right? Mm-hmm. You know, this is this is another one of those funny things that realtors are always. <laughs> I always have the visualization because Julie and I have done this so many times. What I, you know, when we're talking about these these types of topics and we're in front of a big bunch of agents, we ask the question, "How many of you are good at negotiating?" You know, how many hands go up? Like the whole room, right? Everybody, so th- they everybody. Right. Everybody thinks they're great negotiators, and a lot of you are great negotiators. It's true. But most of you lose deals or add stress to the transaction because you basically have never really uh, worked on the skill set of negotiating. You've never really actually – maybe you did have some natu- a natural knack at negotiating. Virtually all of us do, guys, because why? <laughs> As I have learned, being the parent of a near two-year-old, Julie and I, hmm. um, we learn to negotiate when we're babies. Right. I mean, I was trying to feed Zoe last night, and Zoe's word for cookie is gaga, right? 
So we were trying to give her a nice little appropriate meal, and she kept on saying gaga. And what happened was she ended up getting her way. We <laughs> essentially we caved. gave her the gave we caved and gave her the gaga along with her baby food, and then she ate both. Otherwise, she wouldn't have eaten either. So yeah. what they happened? Had to negotiate. When we're babies, when we're kids, we have to learn to negotiate. Um, and that's the reason that most of us do have some resemblance of negotiating skills, okay? Because we learn it from the day we're born. Um, with that in mind, you've got to evolve those skills. You have to get better at it. Negotiating, as Julie's about to share with you, is a critical skill, but it's also a little bit of an art form. Jules? That's right. So number one, understanding that the definition of negotiating is bringing two parties together to reach a mutual agreement not how some of you guys act, which is beating up on the other side. Okay? It's not to get it over on the other party or to be right all the time. Negotiating is bringing two parties together to reach a mutual agreement, otherwise known as a commission check for you. So Tim, to your original point, if you're not making the money that you need to make to meet or exceed your dreams in life, this might be related to it right? because you're not being of service at the highest level with your negotiating skills. So point number two, learn to remove your own emotions. This is a big topic in real estate. Learn to remove your emotions so that you can do the best job for your clients. Be creative and flexible and maintain a mindset of being of service even when the other parties don't behave the way you desire. I used to say on our deals, Tim, you, know, you can be guaranteed that probably everybody else in the transaction is going to be unglued on some level. Buyers are unglued because they're spending a lot of money. Sellers are unglued because they're ha packing their bags and counting on the buyers. The other agent, you never really know what you're going to get there. So you can't join them emotionally. You've got to be the rock or the glue that holds the deal together. You can't jump in that mosh pit with them. So remove your own emotions. And I think that's going to serve you guys well because it's so easy to get into the dirt with some of these deals. So point number three, never ever give up. If you have a buyer who wants to buy and a seller who wants to sell, your job is to figure out how to get them to close. And the thing that comes top of mind you know, for most of you guys is not just the initial negotiating, but the secondary negotiating when you're dealing with inspections and financing and all that fun stuff. So don't give up. All right, so the appraisal came back low. Figure out a way to deal with it. Don't just give up. You cannot be the reason the deal dies. That is a standard of practice you must live with, and you will, I promise you, make more money as a result. So point number four, kind of related to that in, in negotiating, some money is better than no money. That's just a fact. Assess the situation before you say no to deals that you have the power to close. Don't become part of the problem. Now, we're not preaching to you to go around cutting your commission to fix everything. Obviously, you're going to try and fix it every other way humanly possible, but don't let a deal tank out of your own ego. So use the policy, some money is better than no money. Certain parts of the country, standard practice to take you know, a 5% commission instead of 6 Some areas, maybe it's 4 Sometimes when you're doing both sides of the deal, you're going to do it for a flat fee to help everybody out. Walking away from that means you make $0. That's worse. Well, let me throw, so let me throw a little cap. Money. Let me throw a little caveat in there. Um, mm -hmm. Don't treat commission like it's a religion. It's not. It's <laughs> a dollar amount. Okay. Yeah, great point. Some, some of you guys get your egos all wrapped in. And honestly, I know it comes a lot of times from your brokers and your office managers. You treat like you know somebody asking about reducing your commission like it's some kind of you know affront to your religion. Guys, it's commission. You know, let's be a little bit flexible here. In some cases. You have to give a little to get a lot. That's just the reality of life. I, oh, my God, Tim, you're a coach, and you're telling me to cut my commission. No, I'm not. What I'm telling you to do is have some flexibility. And don't lose a deal over commission. But here's a little suggestion for you. Look, there will always be um, sellers, let's say, for example, when you're negotiating. When they're, and, and you can, it's the greatest deal for, and ever, ever offered to a seller. All the numbers are incredible, but they're always going to, you know, some sellers, they're going to go after your commission. It is, a lot of times, guys, cultural, and they're not going to come off it. It just is what it is. It's how they think they're supposed to behave. They're going to do it. They're going to grind you. Those of you who have been in the market for a while, you know what I'm talking about. Opposed to giving, don't give them a dollar or a commission amount, right? 
give them a flat fee. So if you have to give them something, give them like 500 bucks. So literally on the deal, on the, even on the listing contract, you can write down you know, X percent. If you're in like Manhattan and whatever, it's normally 6%. So you might do like 6% minus 500 bucks or something like that. Again, don't lose a listing over commission. Don't lose a listing over price. Don't lose a listing over your ego and your inability to negotiate. This is where this all comes back to. Um, it, so a lot, again, this is a, a, I have coaching clients or I have had coaching calls where somebody will come to the coaching call and they'll be almost proud of themselves. Tim, I went on a listing appointment. The house was $500,000. The sellers had to sell. You know, it would have sold in 30 days at like 510. And the sellers wanted 525, and they wanted me to do it for, you know, 5.5% or whatever the dollar amount was, right? And I told them to go, you know, we argued, and I batted, and I walked out with my convictions. And it's like, really? How did you win in that scenario? How did you actually, where, where, what were you thinking, and how were you thinking that that was the right decision to make? Zero you is get worse the- than 15 grand minus 500 bucks. <laughs> right. Get it? Get Julie's point? <laughs> Zero is not as worse. good, is worse than, than $14,500 if it was a 6%. You following me here, folks? So don't treat commission like a religion. It's not. Yes, defend your commissions. Know the scripts. Know what to say. Know how to say it. That's all the things that we teach you. But at the end of the day, if you have to give in a little bit, and sometimes you will, it's cultural with a lot of these sellers, the new Americans, immigrants, they are going to grind you. Such is the way. Learn to deal with them. Learn to negotiate with them. Because here's the flip side. They have a tendency to be very loyal and send you other clients if you make them happy. That's true. Okay, so moving well, on, Jules. Yeah, that's words to live by because maybe you didn't just lose the fifteen grand in commission. You also lost all that future referral business. So it's far more costly than you think. Okay, so next on our things to get really great at to make maximum income in real estate is closing. So your closing rules, ways to implement and get better to be the best at this. Point number one, understand that closing is the logical ending to a great presentation. Now, if you don't have a great presentation, of course you're never going to close very well. So if you go into a presentation and you wing it, and you find yourself not closing because you're uncomfortable closing or attempting to close and failing at it, it's not just that you're not closing well, it's that your presentation needs work. Let's go back to the origination of this. So closing is the logical ending to a great presentation. If you don't have a great presentation, closing is going to be tough. So that brings us back to our presentation rules. So second point, learn your soft closes, assumptive closes, and direct closes. Have a repertoire of different ways of closing, right? So when you're walking through a house, the seller says, you know, I I got that uh, chandelier when we were in Paris, and gosh, it doesn't look great in our dining room. Is that something you'd like me to include in your home brochure, or do you need help switching that out? That's an assumptive close. It's a soft close. Where would you like the lockbox to be placed? We don't want to ruin your front door. Let's maybe put it on the railing here. I'm being assumptive that I've already got their business, right? So a direct close is something that we teach in, cl- in uh, our coaching, talking about how to present what they want, the Sharpie close, and then close by having given them what they wanted. Again, a great presentation, followed by a close. So this is something that will make you more money being great at it. Now point number three, really big deal. This has been a hot topic amongst the coaches lately. Close at least five times before you give up. We make sure that we coach you to do that People have studied this in different, not just real estate, but in different uh, sales uh, aspects, that on average it takes five to eight closes before somebody actually says yes. So if you're giving up after three attempts saying, well, you know, I left a voicemail, I sent two emails, and I talked to them once. Well, how did you know that the next time they weren't going to say, you know what, we really are finally ready to do something? But Julie, let's Remember, drill down on what you Julie, let's just yeah, drill down please. on what you just said. I, I, I close, guys, what she's talking about, and again, we only have a few minutes left on today's radio show. It's not sign the contract, please. That's not really a close. Maybe that was back in 19, I don't know, 71. But nowadays, basically, yes, you can say sign the contract, please. But in many cases, you're going to have to dance with them a little bit. And Julie was just touching on some of the things that are uh, closing techniques. 
you know, the soft close techniques, the assumptive close techniques. These are all things, by the way, guys, that are already integrated into our pre-listing pack and integrated into our listing presentation. So coaching students, listen very carefully. Ask your coach to help you with level four and level five from Real Estate Coaching Essentials. That's where the listing presentation is. That's where the pre-listing pack is. In essence, all the closing has been done for you if you follow our content, if you use the material that is part of our coaching program. Literally, we have done it all for you. All you have to do is follow the process. So closing always raises the anxiety level amongst agents. And I get it. If you guys, a lot of you, have been avoiding even considering yourself salespeople because you don't want to be perceived as a real pushy salesperson. I respect your fear. I really do. But here's the thing. You, aren't, um, you won't face the uh, pushy salesman label provided you follow a sales presentation, provided you give them a pre-listing pack ahead of time because the close is just the natural end to a good listing presentation. That's it. There's nothing to it. It's Let's get the paperwork out of the way and move on, and how early can I start showing? Is it all right that I bring buyers through on Saturday, or would you prefer I wait until after the weekend? It's not a stressful thing if you follow the whole process. The whole process, by the way, guys, starts on the first contact when you pre-qualify them. But anyway, we have more co- ground to cover. By the way, Julie, before you get to the last point, mm-hmm. I want to thank our uh, title sponsors, um, MojoSales.com for their continued support, and also Z Buyers and 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE.COM. Guys, uh, I'm not exaggerating when I tell you we get solicited, I don't know, three or four times a week for people that want to have us plug their products on our radio show. I, you know, we have 100,000 listeners. We're the most listened to uh, radio show specifically for agents uh, in the country, probably in the world. I don't know if anyone else is doing it at this level. We do this radio show for you guys uh, yeah, obviously every single day, blah, blah, blah. So a lot of folks are wanting us to help promote their product or service, and, and we say no 99% of the time. So you can assume that when we are telling you about a specific product or service, it's not just because they're paying us, because they do. Okay, let's just get that out of the way. It's because other coaching clients rant and rave about the quality of what it is um, of the product. And Mojo sells nothing but positive feedback. Z Buyers, everybody loves Z Buyers. 800 Home Hotline, the same thing. Guys, check these products out yourself. Decide if they're the right fit for your business. I can pretty much guarantee you they are. Remember, these are all dot coms, mojosells.com, zbuyers.com, and 800homehotline.com. Okay, Julie, let's wrap up, and I have to actually get to another radio show. <laughs> yes. All right, great. So in conclusion, if you are not the best in your market on all these critical skills that we've been talking about, hire a coach. Do it today. Why would you struggle with that? Or – Simply become okay with the production that you're at right now. Say, nope, not for me. I'm doing fine. But if you are not making the money of your dreams to accomplish or exceed your goals, you need to hire a coach. Help us make it easier for you. Shorten that learning curve. Don't struggle with it. And be coached by the best. So free coaching calls for agents.com. And guys, if you already have a coach, do what your coach tells you to do. I talk to the coaches individually and weekly. We have coaches calls all the time helping them be the best coach for you. But they're only as good as what you actually do with the coaching. So do what they tell you to do. It's actually easier than struggling. So homework is identify where your weaknesses are and create a specific plan to become the best. If you need help with that and you are not already being coached by us, go to freecoachingcallsforagents.com and ask for help. So stop trying to do a million and one things all the time, not maybe perfectly great, and just concentrate on the things that we talked about, which are lead generation, lead follow-up, pre-qualifying, presenting, negotiating, and closing. Lather, rinse, repeat. That's it. Guys, listen, we love uh, the opportunity to be of service to you in any way we can. Remember, starting last month, we're now able to offer you student loans. You can now become a member of our most exclusive coaching program, the Breakthrough Coaching Program, your own private coach, you and the coach every single week, access to our whole library of materials, including our pre-listing pack, our listing presentation, our buyer presentation. I mean, I don't even know how many hours of videos you get in addition to your own private coach. So we're offering student loans, and that means that if you choose to use the student loan, you can actually become a member of the Breakthrough Coaching Program for only 359 bucks a month. Now, how many of you listening right now have been buying leads from Zillow, for example, and spending more than $359 a month and getting nothing as a result, right? Just essentially money spent. Well, this is your, 
you should be making the mental bridge here. Here's an actual system that's proven to work in all markets and all price ranges that can put you in a position to not just have a lead, but basically have a business which will create a career, which will create wealth for you. Let us help you. It's super, I mean, let's, let's be honest, it's super affordable now, $359 a month. Most of you will qualify for student loans. The way for you to learn more about that is go to freecoachingcallsforagents.com, and when you're getting your free coaching call, ask the coach for the details on that. It's a very simple, easy program. In the meantime, we'll talk with you tomorrow. Have a fantastic day. This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris, Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at timandjulieharris.com. Remember to tune in weekdays at noon for upcoming shows. And until next time, thank you for listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio with Tim and Julie Harris.